Hello everyone, my name is Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design and today I wanted to come on and talk about super fluffy yarn. So I work primarily with super bulky and jumbo size yarn. And within that category, as well as some of the lighter weight yarn categories, there is a category, I guess within a category, um, of fluffy yarn. So like a faux fur, a Chanel, um, yarn that for some people may make you want to rip all of your hair out. <laughs> Um, it can be very difficult to work with, but if you have the patience and some tips and tricks that can be helpful, um, it can make the time using this yarn a little bit easier. Um, so I wanted to focus on two different yarns, both of them by Premier Yarn because I have them in my stash. Um, I also did a review of Hobie's Peacock Yarn, which is very similar to this. It is a five weight yarn. The two that we're going to talk about today are a six weight and a seven weight yarn. And you can see the difference in the skeins here. So the first one, um, and I'll probably talk about them at the same time, but uh, we'll talk about both. The first one is Bunny. Let's see if it'll focus in for you. There you go. Um, again, by Premier Yarn, Bunny. Uh, this is this is also considered a seven weight actually. So these are both seven weight yarns, but one is if you look at the recommended hook size. So this is a big thing with jumbo yarn. If you are a lot of my patterns, not a ton of them, but some of my patterns call for jumbo yarn. But what's really important is that the jumbo yarn category um, spans a lot of different sizes. So you have some jumbo yarn that will recommend on the back of the label. Uh, like an 11 millimeter hook, 11.5 is a big one. Some will even recommend all the way down to like an eight millimeter hook, which to me puts it into more of the super bulky six weight size category. This one recommends a 15 millimeter hook. So I categorize jumbo yarn into about four different categories. There's yarn that recommends around an 11.5 up to a 15. And then there's yarn that recommends from a 15 up to about a 19, 20 millimeter hook. Uh, and then there's, well, I guess that'd be three categories. The third category would be uh, yarn that recommends a 25 millimeter hook. So you've got 11.5, 15, 19 to 20, and 25. So that's why I said four, but usually it's a range. So if I'm making a pattern that calls uh, for a yarn, I used it. If I used a yarn that was uh, recommended a 19 millimeter, then I'll usually say to look for yarn that recommends on the label from a 15 to a 19. Because usually you can get away with using yarn that calls for a 15 for a pattern that calls for a 19. In most cases, obviously you would want to check your gauge if this is a wearable pattern, but. This falls on in the middle of the spectrum, so it's not an 11.5, it's a 15. Um, you get on this one, um, and it is, it is pretty soft, it's 100% polyester. Um, it is very, very faux fur-ish. Um, you get 87 yards, which isn't bad, for especially for a jumbo yarn. Um, let's see, it says you can machine wash warm and tumble dry low, is what it says on here. Uh, all right, so this is a new limited time yarn. So if you're watching this much later than I posted it, you may not be able to get your hands on it uh, anymore, but this is this video is more about working with this kind of yarn versus purchasing very specific yarn, but I'm just gonna use both of these for reference. Um, this one is Premier's Very Plush Big. It is considered a jumbo seven weight. This one recommends a 25 millimeter hook. So that's why I said looking at the label can really help you if you're using a pattern that calls for a jumbo weight yarn. Maybe you can't get access to the exact yarn that the designer used. Look that yarn up, look and see what the recommended hook size is for that yarn and look for a jumbo weight yarn or even a super bulky weight yarn that calls for that size hook on its label. That will help you seek out a yarn that is very similar and you don't end up getting a jumbo weight yarn that calls for an 11.5 millimeter hook when the designer used a jumbo weight yarn that called for a 25 millimeter hook because you may actually end up having to double up that jumbo weight yarn that you bought in order to match their gauge. 
So we are going to flip the camera around and I am going to do a couple of gauge swatches and show you guys some of the tips and tricks that I use to make using this kind of yarn a lot easier. All right, so we are gonna start with Bunny. Now Bunny, again, it calls for a 15 millimeter hook. Now for the life of me, I cannot find my 15 millimeter hook. So I'm gonna go with one of our 16 millimeter hooks. Now these are our 3D printed um, ergonomic crochet hooks meant specifically for working with bulky and super bulky yarn. Um, so you can see on the bottom here, it is marked 16. So this is what I'm gonna be using to show you guys how to work with this yarn. So let's get started. All right, as you can already tell, um, if you have never used super bulky yarn in the first place, or if you're a super beginner to crochet, this is probably the worst thing you could do to yourself, is tr trying to use this yarn because it's nearly impossible to see anything, okay? Um, so finding the beginning, and let's look a little closer at this yarn so you can really see what's happening here. Now, not all faux fur yarn is like this. Um, it really depends on the brand. Um, but this yarn in particular, you can see that there is a cord, kind of a woven cord happening here, and the yarn sticks out in one direction, all right? So it's almost like a little mohawk coming off the cord, okay? So it's not coming off all the way around uh, like some Chanel style yarn where it's actually there's a kind of a cord or, or, or a thread in the middle and the yarn comes out all the way around it. Um, this just comes off on one side. All right, and let's see if I have an example of the other kind. This is the closest I could find to um, a yarn that comes off on all sides. On all sides. So you can see here. Um, where the yarn, there's a center cord in here, but it comes off, comes, the fuzzy parts come off all the way around. All right, so that would be the difference. Um, whether that's a faux fur, this is more of a Chanel style yarn, but that's the kind of comparison that I was going for for you guys. Okay, my first tip, and we're going to start with this tip early because this can really make the biggest difference for especially a beginner trying to use this yarn. And that advice is to hold the yarn doubled with a lighter weight plain yarn. So this is a cotton four weight yarn. Um, I would actually go with a lighter weight yarn than this, but because I am the pink sheep and I only use super bulky yarn. This is about the lightest weight yarn I could find in my stash today when I was looking. So I'm gonna have to go with this for the video, but I would go with maybe a um, three weight yarn. Um, so I guess that would be like a sport weight, something like that. Um, but for the purposes of this, uh, this should work just to show you guys, you know, what I, how I do this. Um, you can find something that is similar in color just to make sure, you know, if you have a little peek through, it won't be that big of a deal, all right? But you're gonna hold this double right here, and we're gonna make a little swatch, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create my slip knot. Again, I am holding these yarns doubled, and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself some slack here so that this fluffy yarn isn't rolling all over the place. And then I know that this was my number one tip, but I think I have a tip that trumps this tip, and that is patience. You just have to be patient. You have to be willing to take your time. Don't rush through these projects um, because you may have to, you know, you may have to frog some things. You may have to work back through, you know, what you're doing. It's, it's not going to be the easiest process no matter how good you are with crochet, how much experience you've had. Um, this can be difficult, all right? So I've got my slip knot, and I'm gonna work a chain of six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, all right? So if you look closely, you can see this yarn peeking through, but since it's a similar color, it's not gonna take away from your project. In comes our, my, I guess this would be my third tip, 
<laughs> so my third tip is to use stitch markers. These are super, super helpful when you are using fluffier yarn. Okay, so if you can find stitch markers that are a bright contrasting color like these, um, these are our 3D printed um, crochet markers that look like cats. Um, these are meant for super bulky yarn. So obviously they're bigger, um, they don't have a snap closure, they just open like this. Um, so they're extremely helpful if you're working with the chunkier yarn, and I'll show you how easy that is to use on this. So I chained six, so my rows are going to be five stitches across each. So we're going to work into the second chain from the hook for our first row. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook and pull up my loop, yarn over. I'm just gonna do single crochet. I'm gonna keep, that's another thing, keep your stitches simple. If you're using this yarn for like a blanket or a pillow or something like that, simple stitches will make your life easier. So I'm just gonna go with single crochet. Now, it's a little easier on the chain to see the stitches, so I don't really have to do as much feeling for the stitches, but that would be my next tip, is to use your fingers to feel for that next stitch space, and then insert your hook once you find it. So that's two. I felt the stitch where I just worked into. I'm gonna go over just a little bit. That's three. That's where I just worked. I'm gonna feel for the next one. That's four. And then that's where I worked. Feel for the next one, which I can feel the knot at the end, so I know I'm right there at the end. And that is my fifth stitch. All right. So first row done, and here's where the stitch markers come into play. Since I finished, I'm going to I'm going to feel for that very first stitch of that first row and I'm going to place a stitch marker. Let's see if I can show you guys this a little closer. I'm going to give myself some slack here and bring this up a little closer. So, I have to really use my hands to feel for this, but I'm going to feel for that first stitch space. And then I'm going to take my stitch marker and I'm going to push that through there. Now, no matter what stitch markers you use, they're probably going to catch a little bit on the fibers because these are such fluffy fibers. Um, but I haven't, I haven't ha ever had it, any of them damage my work. They're just going to, you know, they might be a little bit tougher to get through, um, but they're not going to damage your work. All right. So that is marking my first row, which is super important because even if you can feel for your stitches, it's going to be harder to to know how many rows you've created. All right, so I've marked my first row. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've gone through both pieces of yarn. Pull that stitch tighter again. All right, chain one, turn my work, and here's where I start because you see now I can't see anything. It's just a fluff ball. So now I have to feel this is my chain and I'm going to move my hands down until I feel that first opening and insert my hook. Pull up my loop, create my first stitch. All right, so that's one. Here's two. And again, I'm feeling, I can feel the stitch I just worked into, and then I just move my hands, my thumb and forefinger over until I feel that next opening. And that's three, four, and five, which I should feel the stitch marker in the fifth row because that's where I placed it. So I'm going to insert my hook in that same space. And there is my second row. Now, if you are working much longer chains, you can place a stitch marker in, let's say, every fifth stitch. So 
If I had row of 10, I could place a stitch marker in this fifth stitch and then keep going. And then if I lose my count, I at least know where my fifth stitch was. So I don't have to start all the way back at the beginning to try to feel out how many stitches I have made. All right, so if you lose count. So putting a stitch marker every fifth row, every 10th row can be super, super helpful. All right, so let's do one more row. Chain one turn my work, place my first, and actually, before I do that, let's do it this way. I'm gonna pull that chain out. I'm gonna go ahead and place a stitch marker into that last stitch. All right, so there we go. Then I'm gonna chain one and turn my work, and I'm gonna work into that same stitch that I just placed the stitch marker into. because that denoted my second row. But now I've made my first stitch into my third row, so I'm gonna place another stitch marker into my third row. All right, so now I've got one row, two rows, three rows. And I don't know if I ever really explained why um, I use this second piece of yarn. It just gives you more to feel for, all right? It makes the, the spaces bulkier, um, the actual hardness of the yarn and those pieces in here. And for me, it makes the stitches easier to feel. And that's the goal, because you're not gonna be able to see them. You need, it, you need to be able to feel them. And so if you put another piece of yarn in there, it's gonna make those stitches much, much easier to feel out. All right. So there we are. We have our little, kind of looks like animal from, <laughs> from the Muppets. I have that super, super fluffy yarn, but now I'm not gonna have to worry, okay, what row am I on? Because I know that I'm placing a stitch marker in either the first or the last, depending on the direction I'm going. And at this point, I know I have three rows, so that's not a concern. And usually with stitches, especially if you double up your yarn, you'll be able to feel if I'm like, okay, I'm not really sure how many stitches I did in that row. You can find your first one, because there'll be a stitch marker there, and feel your way across two, three, four, five. So I know that I had five across. So I hope these tips are helpful. Um, we are also going to look um, at this chunkier yarn, the chunkier version, um, but it's gonna be very, very similar. So for the very big plush yarn, I had actually already started on a project. So I am just gonna show you the progress of that project and show you how I am working with this yarn. So as you can see, very, very thick plush yarn, just like it says on the label, uh, very plush. All right, so as I talked about with Bunny, uh, Premier's Bunny yarn, I am using stitch markers at the end of every row so that I don't lose count because I am making a wearable item, all right? So I really have to make sure that my st stitch counts are correct for this. Um, but as you can see, I have two strands of yarn. This is a lighter three-weight yarn that I'm holding doubled with the very big plush or very plush big. Um, and as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 rows, all right? So I also wanted to show you guys, um, if you have to frog this yarn, so I'm gonna frog this row back and redo it so you guys can see. If you have to frog it, just be patient and gentle, all right? So I'm gonna make sure that I've got a good grip on both pieces of yarn, all right? I wanna make sure I'm not just pulling on one. I need to have them both held nice and tight in my hand. I'm gonna hold my work and I'm gonna pull that yarn out. Now, it already has started to snag. So what I usually do is I try to pull at different angles, all right? So I've got a nice grip on this. I'm gonna pull up a little bit. I'm gonna pull down a little bit, up, down, sometimes in the direction of the stitch can help, but take your time, try different angles, see what works. You don't wanna snap the yarn, 
All right. Now, I do have to say the Very Plush Big has a really strong center braid. So I'm not really afraid of the yarn snapping. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't warp anything or do anything to make the yarn uh, to the point where it wouldn't be usable um, to continue to crochet with. All right. So I'm back to my initial chain. And I think I placed my stitch marker... Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and take him off of here. This was one of our little snowman stitch markers that I made, and I have to say the cats are definitely better. Um, these little guys are better for the really, really jumbo yarn because the center hole is bigger. Um, so these, obviously, it's a little more narrow. Um, so I do like to use these for the, the seven weight yarns, the jumbo seven weight yarn. It's just easier to, to go around such a big uh, piece of yarn, all right? So I do need to place that back. I just don't want it around my working yarn. So I'm going to place that stitch marker, just a different stitch marker, back in place so I don't lose count. All right. And then I'm going to bring the back of that yarn around. Now, this yarn recommends a 25 millimeter hook, which is exactly what I'm using. Uh, I'm actually making one of my power puff jackets using this yarn because it calls for a seven weight yarn that recommends a 25 millimeter hook on the label, which is exactly uh, what we've got here. So if you can see uh, the 25 millimeter recommended hook size right here. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready. And I think, let's see, it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna try to pull that out one more. Yep, so that was my, that was not my chain one. So now I'm gonna have to go back one more. And again, this is why I said my one of my first rules to using this yarn is patience. So I pulled out the last stitch of my last row. So I'm gonna have to flip my work around, place that stitch one more time. And again, this is why I, I chose to design the Pink Sheep 3D printed hooks the way that I did, um, because a lot of the, the 25 millimeter hooks just don't have the depth of this section to really hold onto that yarn like you want it to. So um, not to toot our own horns, but we, de we definitely designed our hooks for using this super bulky yarn and really making sure that the process is a lot easier and you're not having to fight your hook and the yarn. You know, you're already going to have to be fighting the yarn a little bit. You don't want to be fighting your hook too. All right. So now I'm going to feel for that first stitch space, insert my hook, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through. Now I do have to check in with this yarn and make sure that my smaller weight yarn isn't getting tangled up. Um, into little knots or that it's not going to be looser. Like sometimes what you'll find is you'll come further down and maybe it'll have done this. So like maybe it's wrapped up on itself and you want to make sure that it is pulled nice and tight. So you just want to every now and then after a couple stitches just check in with both of your strands of yarn. But as you can see, you cannot see that second strand of yarn. In this. I mean, if you really try to pull it apart and look for it, maybe you could. Um, but I chose a yarn that, you know, I felt was kind of a muted tone so it wouldn't take away from the purple if I did see it poking through. But so far, I've had no issues with any kind of poke through. All right, so I'm going to replace this stitch marker since I'm starting a new row. All right. And I have six stitches across. So I've started my first one. I'm going to feel that's the one I just worked into. I'm going to take my thumb and forefinger and find the next one. That's two. And we've got number three. And number four. And five. And six is the last one. All right. So there we go. That is how I am managing this project. As you can see, 
This is the other side. This is one of my front panels. I've got stitch markers going all the way down the side to make sure I knew just how many rows I had completed. Um, and I can't wait to show you guys this one. This should be a really, really fun, finished, furry Powerpuff jacket. Now, if you guys um, check out my Powerpuff jacket pattern, um, and you like this idea and you want to challenge yourself a little bit and you want to create a puffy, uh, fluffy version of the Power Puff jacket, um, this yarn is limited edition. So it's not going to be out forever. So if you're just seeing this, this is early January 2023. Um, you should be able to get your hands on it. Um, get yourself some. It's actually only going to take me. So let's see. You get, where is it? Mm -hmm. you get 98 yards of this yarn. So according to my pattern, now some yarn, for some reason, you end up using more than other types of yarn. So it really does depend, and I don't know yet because I haven't finished, but I only have three of these. It should be enough to finish my Powerpuff jacket. So check the yardage. Um, this was sent to me by Premier, so I may have to order more. If I do, I'll just order one more ball. But I'm pretty sure that this should be enough, just three balls of this, to make myself a fluffy power puff jacket, right? So you don't need a ton. You don't need like six of these. Um, depending on your size, you may need more. But um, I'm making the extra small slash small size. Uh, and it calls for, I think, 250 yards, something like that, of a size 7 yarn that recommends a 25 millimeter hook. So technically, I should only need three of these. So we're going to see. And I can't wait to share this with you guys. So I really hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future tips and tricks and reviews and all of those wonderful crochet things. And until next time, happy hooking!